Hello, in today's video, Blender 2.8 and using it as a video editor. I always use Blender as a video editor and I found it's pretty good for that just because you can do almost every effect. Although I don't know how to do every effect yet, I admit, but I know the basics of how to get a video rendering that will work for any generic situation, so I want to show you that. So first of all, you do need to go to blender.org, download Blender 2.8, and unpack it. I've unpacked it to or on my desktop here. And then you go into that folder you unpack it to and run the Blender, make a shortcut to this if you want. There will be a lot of updates, so some of these things might change in a minor way, but overall it should stay the same. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to walk you through from the starting screen to getting an actual thing rendering properly so that you could upload it to a place like, say, YouTube. There are a few nuances here that if you miss, you'll be sort of out of luck. And once you launch it, you should get this screen. This is default. I haven't changed anything here. One thing that's different from 2.79 is there's no just video editing thing drop down. You have to click this plus up here and go to it. And then you'll get to a screen that looks more like it's for video editing. In this area here, this is your, I think it's called a sequ sequencer. Yep, sequencer. You can zoom out with the mouse wheel. Oh, it's right click to move around now. Okay, so the left and right click were changed by default on Blender 2.8 in case you don't know that yet. So what used to be left click is now right click and of course this is the start point of your render and this over here is the end point of your render. You can change that by going down here and typing in the new number. If you zoom out and go to where you want it to go you'll see where you're at and you can change this one to the same number. And that's where your render will be now. Okay so before we even drop in a video here I want to go through these properties over here because these are really important. You see it has a 1080 default resolution and it's 100%. If you change this percent down, it will render faster, but it will be lower quality. This can be good for doing demo renders just to make sure that things turn out as you expect. Uh, if you want to just do the render quickly at a lower quality. But when you're ready to do your full thing at the highest quality possible, you want to crank this up, of course. So there's the start and end frames, which are the same as being edited down there. This frame rate should auto adjust to your video type. So if you have multiple different videos at different frame rates, that could get a little weird. Um, but it should auto detect whatever video you drag and drop into here and turn it to the correct frame rate. I usually record at 60 FPS, so this should turn to 60 FPS once I drop a video in here. But a few more quick things before I drop a video in here and go to rendering something. You want to look at your output and change that to somewhere where you know. So by default, this puts it on your root drive under a folder called temp. So it's usually your, usually your C drive under temp is the default. Probably not the best spot if you ask me, but it depends. And then you'll notice it says PNG here. We probably don't want to do it as a bunch of PNGs. You can do it as a bunch of PNGs. It'll render every frame as a PNG with this method. I usually switch it to FFmpeg video. This is great for uploading to, say, YouTube. Then you also want to go to encoding. This encoding is super important. If you miss this, you will not get any sound. So go to encoding. Leave it all the same. Leave it all the same. Look for audio. And change this audio codec to AAC. That seems to work great. These defaults seem to work fine. I wouldn't mess with any of these. On any video clip, you can manually adjust the volume, so I would recommend just leaving this one alone and manually adjusting them on your on your video clip audio if need be. I usually leave this at medium quality. It seems to be fine. Going any higher makes your files massive, so maybe maybe you need even higher quality, but I don't really notice any loss at medium and it's still a pretty big file but if you want it to be even higher quality and a much larger file even you can do that so I, I think medium's fine 
I leave all these the same. Okay, so let's drop in a small video and I'll give you a quick sample of how to do things. So when you drop in a video, I believe it's going to start at wherever your cursor is. So I'm holding right click here and just moving my cursor. And I'm going to look for a small video. I am going to get rid of this little file area. I guess I'll do a Python console for now. I'm going to bring in this 53 kilobyte file. And there you can see my, my dude on Arc, a little clip of me taming a dino. But as you right click around, there's a bit of a delay as it syncs up the video. Now, if you want this delay to go away, you can hide this. I don't know, I'll just turn it to another sequencer. But if it doesn't have to render the video uh, image as you click around, it goes a lot faster. So here we have our files, uh, our, our file stuff. One of these is a video file, and one of these is an audio file and you can tell by left clicking on it and you see what you get over here. So the audio one, let's look at it first real quick here because there's something that I always do. Okay, the audio one's this lighter cyan one, not the purplish one. If you highlight your audio one, you can click display waveform and you'll see the waveform of your audio. This can often help pick out the important parts where you're explaining something or where something's happening or the, the action is. So seeing this audio can really help and it's a lot faster to scan through it than it is with a preview because the problem with this preview is it just lags so much when you go to switch to a different part. I've already right clicked, waiting, waiting, waiting. It just takes so, so long to flip around through your video. So you, you probably want to do a mix of of those depending on what you're doing and okay let's let's explain a few other basic things if you select a video clip hold shift you can multi select and then you can left click to unselect if you hold control and select one i think these are actually slightly different lengths they came in as different length but I think if you hold control and left click, it selects everything with the same length, which isn't working here because these are slightly different. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this audio one by the end. If you click the little end arrow and you can zoom way in if you can't see those because your video is too short or something. You can click the end, press G and, and start moving it. And if you hold control here, it'll snap. So if I hold control, it snaps to the end. Now these should be about the same as long as the start is the same. Do the same thing here, press G, hold control, looks like it starts at one. It tells you the start frames there. And now if I hold control and select, it should select them both because they're the same. So control left click to select matching ones. G for grab. So after you click something, if you click here and the center, not the endpoints, and hit G, you can grab and move it. And you can press X or Y to lock it to the X or Y. For example, if I hit Y here. I can only move it up and down. If I hit X here, I can only move it left and right. So some hotkeys that come in handy. There we go. Got it lined up again. So usually, if you're if you're clipping this, say I want to cut off a bit of the beginning, I'll Control Select to get them both. Get my little cursor where it wants. And while they're selected, you press K for a cut, and then you can grab these ends and and clean them up as you want. And then you can you can double you can select whatever's left, press G, jump in the place. If it gets red a little, that's usually okay. It'll usually snap. You gotta be careful with that. If you hold shift, okay, so you can move it real quickly. If you hold shift, it moves really slowly. So you can line things up carefully. And the layers do matter. You can hit let's see, you can go somewhere else on here, anywhere you want with your cursor, and hit shift A to add something. Like you might want to add text, color, you can bring in a movie, sound. There's a lot of stuff to play around with. I'm not going to go over all these, but Shift A brings up the general thing. Your properties pane over whatever you have selected is here, so you can adjust that. Like maybe this audio ended up way too quiet. I can select this audio and crank up the volume. Or you can mess with pitch. There's a lot of things to experiment with here. I'm really just showing you how to kind of get it generally working with some basic cuts. I'm not going to go over all the effects. There's just so much you can do with Blender. People do full 
movie quality stuff with Blender. And of course you can bring in your animations. I haven't even got to that phase yet. I'm just working with video clips and audio. And you can bring in PNGs and and use, uh, let's see, if, it, if you select something that has video, you can change the opacity of it. So if you're layering them over top of each other, you can, you can opacity stuff in. So you can make an image with GIMP or Photoshop, for example, bring it in here with a uh, image or just drag it in, move it around, stretch it out, change the opacity of it. So you can layer images over top of your stuff too. And there are offsets, crops that you can do. I'm going to, I'm going to just do this, um, like this here. So kind of a little bit off the beginning, I'm gonna make it rather short. Um, let's see. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. You can press while you have your cursor selected somewhere, you can hit page up to go to the end or page down to go to the start of the next cut. So that comes in handy sometimes. And then I'm right here where I want it to end. It's 278. I'm going to change this to 278. And that'll get us nice and clean there. Of course, if you're doing a video, maybe you want a little outro area, 20 second extra cut here, for example, to add some outro and maybe some intro or however you want to do it. That's up to you. So there we go. Looks good at 1080, 100%. Change to 60 FPS automatically because this is a 60 FPS video. So when you're ready to render, you can press Control F12, or you can go here and hit Render Animation. And this should re start rendering as you have your setup. This might lag out my video. I don't know. I have it pop up this little demo thing and show me the render. But uh, yeah, that's that's doing it. You probably want to leave your computer or idle and don't mess with other stuff while this is happening um, depends on how powerful your computer is but you can bug this out if you're trying to do a bunch of other stuff while it's rendering so if you got a long rendering going just let it go if you're editing a lot of really large video you're gonna need an absolute beast of a machine for it to keep up and not get really laggy once you start adding effects and cuts and layers your project will feel progressively slower as you add more to it. So I've tried to do like hour videos in one edit with a bunch of effects and it was a nightmare uh, to, you know, you add one effect and you have to wait like a full minute for it to even load your processing. So just FYI, that is a thing that uh, uh, it's, it's nice to have an editor out there that works pretty reliably and can do just about everything without having to having to pay a large sum of money. Uh, last thing this video did finish, I'm going to go to rendered and take a look at it here. There it is. It by default gives it the name of its time, uh, 1 to 331. So there it is. And if I double click on right, it here, it looks like I got a pretty high quality video. Previous one got eaten by a car now. Uh, somehow it turned into a five second video. Okay, it's only a five second video. It's a very short clip. Yeah, there it is. Zero five six seconds so it's really short all right so there it is legs 2.0 because the previous one There's and uh i'm out i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching